Looks like a normal wing, right? But you cut it and it's a sweet garlic boneless wing stuffed with fried rice. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. Buffalo Wild Wings is being sued because their boneless wings are not actually wings. Wow, I'm shocked. You shouldn't have let that happen around me, brother. Presently, pretty much any boneless wing you're gonna see has never been a wing, but they should be and they could be. But for some reason, nobody has begged the question, is it possible? Where are they? So let's say you have a wing and it's a wing with bones in it. Couldn't you just take that wing and take the bones out and then cook it, right? Seems straightforward to me. So that's what we want to find out, but more specifically, if it works. But I've got a little something special for that hole where there used to be a bone. Take that how you want. But with that being said, let's make this, shall we? Ah, nothing like some light reading. Like in my new book, which is now available for pre-order. The link's in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, so making a wing boneless and, well, flaccid actually isn't that hard. So let's make it quick and figure out how we can really use this to our advantage. I'm leaving the wing tips on for aesthetic, and so they look more like wings. Plus, they aren't usually eaten beyond a little nibbling. So here's a full chicken wing. In order to do this, first find the joint that connects the drumette to the flap. Expose the joint, cut in between, and remove. And then just save the drumettes for people who want bone-in wings. What we really want is the Rolls Royce of the wing, the flat. At least it is to me. You're gonna take some scissors, you're gonna cut the tendon that connects the two at the top, and then you're just gonna carefully begin cutting the meat away from the bone, keeping your scissors constantly held up against the bone. Bink, bink. Once it starts to get a little loose, you're gonna take your thumb and index finger and push the meat down. Squeeze the bone. What you're doing is you're separating the meat from the bone until all the way to where it connects with the wingtip. Now you've got two exposed bones here, see that? Just bend, pop them at the joint, remove, and repeat with the other bone. That is it. The first time's gonna take you a little bit of time, but as you do more and more, you'll get better. That's the beauty of being a human being. You see, when you have a goal and you look at that goal and you keep taking action towards it every single time, suddenly it becomes easier, simpler, faster, like life or deboning a wing. So with all these recipes, you'll do this with about two and a half pounds or 1.1 kilos of whole wings. Obviously, you can do less, but you know, get a friend, it'll be fun, trust me. So what am I supposed to do with this now? Just make wings as normal? Sure, you could optionally toothpick the open end of the wing so it holds its shape better or not, and deep fry it in a frying oil of your choosing, vegetable oil, canola, whatever, at 350 Fahrenheit, pull them out, and toss them with a very basic buffalo sauce, which is literally just a small sauce pot, two thirds of a cup or 175 grams of Frank's Red Hot, a splash of white distilled vinegar, heat that over medium till steamy, remove from the heat, stir in a third cup or 83 grams of unsalted butter, whisk until melted and emulsified, you can add two cloves garlic grated. Let that sit for about a minute, pass through a fine mesh strainer, and season with salt if needed. So yeah, you could toss it with that. Ooh, ah. Luscious. Maybe you have a little ranch dressing to dip it in. I have a recipe for that in the link in the description at the very bottom. But after all that, is it really worth it? When was the last time you grabbed an actual wig and just Bit the whole thing. You know what? We got a problem. These could be much better. Like they're good, but I think we need to step it up. There's a void here in the center of every single wing. What if we filled that void? Let's try that. Okay, we're missing something crucial here. Since the wing is already hollowed out and it's great on its own, but this is the real reason why boneless wing is worth it. You see that? Looks like a normal wing, right? But you cut it and it's a soy garlic boneless wing stuffed with fried rice. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. I didn't invent this technique, but hopefully I'm bringing it to the masses and maximizing it. And it's not the only recipe out there like this, but it might be one of my favorites. You'll need one pound or 450 grams of deboned wings. That's after they're deboned. So about one and a half to two pounds or 680 to 900 grams. And you can make any fried rice you want here. My recipe is very basic. Add about two tablespoons or nine grams of vegetable oil to a wok, heat until smoking, add in one finely diced shallot, two finely diced serrano chilies, season lightly with salt, stir fry 30 seconds, add two cloves of garlic thinly sliced, stir fry another 30 seconds, fold out with two cups or 380 grams of cooked and chilled white rice. Yes, leftover rice is perfect. Stir fry for one minute, move the rice to one side, add one large egg, season it lightly with salt, scramble till cooked through, then stir fry all that together. Finally, add two thinly sliced green onions, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground white pepper, one teaspoon or five grams of M M M S G. You're welcome. One tablespoon or 12 grams of dark soy sauce, two teaspoons or eight grams of sweet soy sauce. Toss everything together, finish with a light drizzle of toasted sesame oil and let that cool completely. The stuffing is very simple. You take your wings and you stuff them generously with your rice. What is that? Oh, it's a piping bag for rice. Who knew that would work? Apparently it does very well in fact. And it's far easier than, you know, trying to like finger the rass in there. <laughs> Not like that, okay? Now, once they're all stuffed, you'll need to toothpick these bad boys shut. Otherwise they may open up in the fryer. So two to three toothpicks, closing the open end, nice 
and doit like this. Now, once all those are stuffed, and before you fry, you're gonna make a quick soy garlic glaze. In a medium saucepan, add one cup or 184 grams of white sugar, half a cup or 120 milliliters of white distilled vinegar, a quarter cup or 62 grams of sake, and a quarter cup or 53 grams of chicken stock. Bring to a boil over medium high and reduce until you get an amber color like this, you know, like a caramel. Then reduce the heat to medium, stir in half a cup or 120 milliliters of fish sauce, and two tablespoons or 30 grams of soy sauce. Yes, stinky alert for those who have an untrained nose. For those who love fish sauce, then your whole kitchen is gonna smell like it. And that's a beautiful thing. Now turn the heat to low and add three red Thai chilies, rough chopped, five rough chopped garlic cloves, stir to combine, make a quick cornstarch slurry in a bowl by combining one tablespoon or eight grams of cornstarch and a splash of water, mix it until homogenous, and it's very simple. Stir that into your glaze, continue to heat over low until thickened about 20 seconds. Remove from the heat and pass through a fine mesh sieve. Then just like before, you deep fry these bad boys in a six to seven quart pot filled with about two and a half to three quarts of vegetable oil that's been heated to 350 Fahrenheit until you reach a nice GBD and an internal temperature of 165 Fahrenheit. What's GBD? That's golden brown delicious. Yeah, like that. Now, once those wings are done, take them out of the oil using a frying spider, drain on a wire rack, remove any toothpicks, place them in a large bowl, and glaze generously. I mean, look at these glistening, luscious wings. And with the surprise, let's hope it's a good one and taste test. So we filled the void with fried rice. We got the sweet soy glaze. You dip it in ranch too, why not? Holy sh**. I think this is the greatest wing I've ever had. In terms of flavor and experience, this is unstoppable. This is a textural wonderland that you will literally never experience in your entire life unless you make this. Think about that. Kendrick, I need you to come taste test this, please. Here we go. That's, oh my God. There's a lot of great textures going on here. The flavors, I mean, come on. Somehow the ranch does make it better. That's what I don't understand. I don't get it. Ranch makes everything better, folks. Remember that. Oh. <laughs> ah! Man, that guy, he, you know, he gets you. It's honestly mortifying. On to the next. Last but arguably the best, loaded potato stuffed Korean style wings. Mamma mia. Yeah. Same prep, same quantity of wings. Of course, you can do more. This time, the stuffing will be a basic cheesy potato. Peel and cut one pound or 450 grams of Yukon Gold potatoes. You want them into one inch half moons. Place this into a boiling water. Season with salt generously and cook for eight to 10 minutes or until the potatoes are very soft. Now, while those are cooking, you're gonna take four slices of bacon, cut into half inch lardons. What do we think about the pronunciation for all the French that are watching? That's not bad, right? Now, cook those in a medium skillet over medium heat, stirring often until crispy and beautiful like this. For about five to six minutes. Drain on a paper towel, then using a knife, simply chop very finely and eat all of it because you have no self-control and then set to the side. Once the potatoes are done, drain them and then run them through a potato ricer. Pause. Yes, you can use a hand masher. You can also use a fork. I mean, heck, you could even use your bare hands if you're wild and like that. But a potato ricer will keep them extra smooth. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry. Pop those in a medium saucepan, set over medium low, and add a little salt to taste. A third cup or 76 grams of unsalted butter, about one tablespoon at a time, stirring in each tablespoon, letting it melt and incorporate. Once all that's been added, stir in a light splash of milk, adjust salt and pepper levels if needed, leaving just a bit of room for extra salt, which will be added through half a cup or 32 grams of grated provolone cheese, and half a cup or 45 grams of grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Fold that together until completely combined, and finally, fold in two tablespoons or seven grams of thinly sliced chives, your bacon, fold, 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 give it a little how you doing? See that? Taste that right now. If you're wondering, this is what love feels like. Look, the gochujang sauce is similar to the one from the Buffalo Wild Wings, but better. So large sauce pot, just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom, set over medium heat, then finely chop eight cloves of garlic, add half to your pot now, along with a two-inch knob of ginger, grated, cook stirring often until the garlic starts to toast, then add one teaspoon or four grams of toasted sesame oil, half a cup or 50 grams of white sugar, a quarter cup or 90 grams of honey, three quarters of a cup or 170 grams of rice vinegar, half a cup or 115 grams of dark soy sauce. Whew, okay, we're almost there. Come on now. A quarter cup or 56 grams of mirin, and finally two tablespoons or 56 grams of gochujang. Yeah, don't forget the two and a half tablespoons or 32 grams of ketchup, really wanted to finish there. Mix that in, heat over medium, let that simmer for three to five minutes or until slightly reduced. Then in a small bowl, combine one tablespoon or 15 grams of cornstarch and one tablespoon or 14 grams of water. With still combined, stir that into your gochujang sauce and heat that until thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. That's a meme reference, I'm sorry. With a viscosity like this. Now cut the heat and stir in your remaining finely chopped garlic. Again, once your potatoes are cooled enough, put in a piping bag and well, you take your wings and pipe it up. Now, don't overfill these too much, okay? But you're gonna toothpick all them wangs shut. And this time for your wangs, you're gonna first toss them in a bowl containing about one and a half cups or 180 grams of cornstarch. Really enjoy that terrible arm hair raising crunch that the cornstarch has. You know what I'm talking about. Now, toss until thoroughly coated. No, bald spots. I'm so tired of saying it. Please stop. Shake off the excess. And then immediately fry at 350 Fahrenheit as you did before. Now, you'll fry these for five to seven minutes or until GBD. Remove, toss with your sauce generously. And I mean, look at these glossy, girthy wangs just waiting to be eaten. 
Now wait, before you eat these, I have something very important to say about these wings. Remember, what is the power here? The power is you can stuff these wings with whatever you want. Heck, you can even stuff these wings with more meat. Depends on how hardcore you want to get. You could take seasoned ground chicken or pork, stuff your wings. You probably would have to par-bake these if you did them that way and then fry them. But the point is you'd be getting the meatiest boneless wings of all time if you did that. So just think about that. It's truly magical. And that way is unbelievably juicy. That being said, it's time for our final taste test. Gochujang wings with a chive mashed potato. That sounds devious. Whoa. This sauce is much better than the last sauce. Oh man. This is it. The richness inside this wing gives it a level of depth that you would never get. Because when are you combining mashed potatoes with wings? And you might be thinking, why would you do that? I don't know. All I know is you have to experience this. This needs to be on the menu of every restaurant that serves wings, period. It's a beautiful thing. You know what? I'm gonna give this magic thing a try. All right, I guess that's it. Mmm, savory, creamy, a little buttery from the mashed potatoes. And the ranch is just so refreshing. I'm not usually a ranch person, but something about that, that's good. Thank you, Kendrick. Now here's how you do it. 